Well, upon seeing recent pictures from the NASA Juno spacecraft of Jupiter up close, I was inspired <coughs> excuse me, to uh, possibly do a new artwork. Um, any astronomer who's done extensive observing through a telescope eyepiece up close of planets, uh, of course you're going to see quite this detail as flying up to Jupiter and flying right over it. And uh, I had the idea of taking the uh, the past spacecraft, as you see here from uh, 2001, the Discovery One, and placed it over the the image from the Juno NASA image of Jupiter, gave it some depth or some realism. And of course, also seeing uh, recent books by Chesley Bond Still, which I discovered uh, in Powell's books here in Portland. They're great finds. They're really rare to find these. They're just not on any bookshelf in every bookstore that you'll enter. It's, in fact, it's rare to even find this one here. It's one of the very first ones from the 1950s. Uh, the Conquest of Space. You can see the title there. It's a little dark here with the lighting in the room where I'm working. Uh, at this image of Saturn, I saw uh, Bond Stills, uh, what was known to the Renaissance artist is chiaroscuro effect, uh, placing a lighter object in the foreground against a dark background um, shadow here of Saturn's rings, seeing edge on, casting their shadow onto the planet as if you were on one of its close moons. I think they actually described this as being on the moon Mimas. And Bonestell has sketched some very small, it's almost hard to see here without zooming in with a macro, but, uh, very small astronauts standing here on the surface. Uh, in the distance, actually, they're so tiny you can hardly see them here against the, the grain of the rocks in the foreground, two little white figures here. So I had the idea of, again, taking this image of uh, the Jupiter uh, close-ups from the Juno, which I showed here earlier, and, uh, and then starting a rough sketch uh, today. And it's going to be, this is basically very rough down. You're seeing it at an angle here. Kind of, 90 degrees. Actually, you should see it more straight on, straight. Line with me, straight up. And, uh, proper orientation is the way you're looking on the screen there a moment ago. And I placed some rocks in the foreground, which uh, appear to be uh, a large foreground, like we'd see on the moon, some of the early moon sketches by Von Still and other great space artists. But I brought in the uh, South Equatorial Belt of Jupiter to start here with the Great Red Spot. It's just, it's very roughly rendered so far. It's going to have to be blended yet, and the whole planet will be filled with bright light uh, as if it's uh, only a few thousand miles away from one of Jupiter's close moons. And of course, there's been other art um, over the years, and I'm probably going to do something like put a small spacecraft like you see here um, on the surface of the moon. A future mission of NASA's. And uh, as you can see, the small, tiny spacecraft with astronauts standing around it. And I'll probably put something like that into the, the Jupiter sketch I'm doing. Um, it's a departure from what I've done recently. Um, I'm putting my hands into my art like you've seen there before. Um, the Mercury transit over the face of the sun last spring in 2016 other works that have been uh, more toward the realm of realism, uh, photorealism, say. Uh, like this one of the total eclipse of the moon done with the Vista House lanterns on the gorge. Uh, some other examples here. Something like this. small space I'm working with, but uh, something more realistic like this, of uh, the moon, uh, the three-quarter phase, or gibbous phase on a night of uh, the sinus iridium is on the edge, a small mountain range, and I did a detail of it up close here, and then a foreground, uh, just artist rendering of a foreground um, conception. Here's my other realistic works. Uh, I was shocked after I had this one up in a astronomy form back east some years ago, about eight years ago. 
received an anonymous email one night from a lady who wanted to use it on her husband's gravestone. She had, he had been an astronomer and passed away recently, and she was struggling to look for something to put on his gravestone, and she saw this and was uh, just apparently so pleased she had to write an email to me and ask if she could have it, so I sent her a high-resolution file of Saturn um, as seen from its moon Titan with apparent oceans in the foreground. And even accidentally sketched in some astronauts frolicking in the waves. But that's, uh, that was accidental there. You can see that in the light. It looks like there's three figures in the waves in the foreground there. You know, it's actually they're very small. It was just scumbling of the chalk that caused this. So uh, it's, uh, it's a subject in art that's very, it's wide and varied. It's as big as the universe, of course, if you'll excuse the pun. But I was probably inspired early on by uh, seeing Chesley Bonstell's art in, in books in grade school. And uh, when I saw these landscapes, these planetary scapes or moonscapes of distant planets, it probably uh, piqued my curiosity as a young child to eventually buy a telescope and start observing through it. It's, it's the common story many young astronomers have. Uh, they started out seeing these very re realistic paintings by Chesley Bonestell. He was teamed up with uh, uh, the famous rocket scientist from Germany, Werner von Braun, as they all defected and came over from Germany back in the mid-1940s after World War II. And von Braun, of course, worked with uh, other scientists, people that were later consulted with to work on 2001 A Space Odyssey with, with Stanley Kubrick to make realistic depictions of uh, spacecraft. As you can see here, this is actually one of Bonestell's earlier works that I think Cooper probably used, showing a spaceship flying over the surface of the moon in the movie later. Uh, of course, the circular spaceships over Earth that were used uh, in Bonestell's early depictions to advertise and promote the American space traveling in Collier's magazine. They made uh, several of these images that uh, later became the forefront or forerunners of our early NASA spacecraft. So when people would think of these as being uh, space fantasy art, they actually became space realism because they were uh, later used to promote the space program for NASA. And, and some of these are actually very detailed works by other artists other than Chesley Bonestell. I'm forgetting this gentleman's name now. They did these inside depictions of spacecrafts and living quarters. And, um, oh, just some of the procedures of setting up and building space stations in space. Again, these are Chesley Bonestell's works here. Now, this is a great book. It's Visions of Space Flight. Um, and it shows some of the early first images from space that were depicted as more fantasy in their day 100 or 200 years ago when they had no idea yet about how we'd ever make it out there. They were still looking at floating balloons and parachute devices and people walking in cartoons in space. They, they probably couldn't quite figure out space travel yet. So um, rocketry, of course, led to uh, from fireworks and other early means of uh, jet propulsion, as they imagined. And a lot of uh, grandiose uh, images, but and actually some very detailed drawings too that became somewhat more realistic. Um, but uh, they guessed being on uh, moons near other planets that looked like they had beautiful gardens. Of course, they depicted space as being something wonderful that we could go out and live in. Uh, much to our surprise, we found much different later. But uh, anyway, so I'm working on this new Jupiter drawing. I think I'll have it all blended together maybe here in a day or two, but it's uh, the idea just getting the foreground and, and making it realistic. And creating this, uh, I guess I could talk more about it later in another video. I'm not going to go on too long here, but uh, the idea of what artists do in these drawings is you put a light edge against a dark background. And it tends to make it appear to lift from the page and create a three-dimensional effect. And... Uh, it was done in the one with Saturn, you see here too, that I've done a few years ago. The foreground features. So, uh, okay, well, that's just a quick tutorial on what I've been working on and some ideas. Um, I may put the 
2001 spaceship in the distance of Jupiter in the sky. Um, working on the conception of the screen. As you can see, it's, uh, it's a matter of uh, just cutting it out and using it from an online site. And I can place it over the planet, or I can place it into the black sky, partway under the planet, to create a, a three dimensional effect. Eventually, in the drawing, I'll be doing here. Okay, that's about all for now. And I'll pick this up with a future uh, video showing the progress of this huge sketch of